Hi there. We continue our course on noise insulation and move on to its practical part. Behind me you can see a disassembled Geely Atlas Pro. In order to install comprehensive noise insulation, we removed all plastic skin elements and seats. After disassembling the interior, we can see standard noise insulation materials. There can be several standard noise insulation materials, they are all different and serve different functions. Let's start with vibration absorbers. Here we can see quite a lot of standard vibration absorbers. They cover almost the entire trunk and floor, and we can also notice them. For example, on the rear fenders, these standard vibration absorbing elements serve to absorb body vibrations, that is, to make the car chatter a little less. Before installing our noise insulation, we need to check standard vibration absorbing elements because there could be water accumulated under them, cracks, falling off, and so on. To check them, you can use this simple tool. It is a plastic remover or, in common parlance, a picker. We do it like this. We pick this up and check. This car is new, so everything fits very well and tight. But even with new cars we sometimes see cases where standard vibration absorbers are falling off in layers, for example on Russian assembled vehicles like Toyota RAV4 or Toyota Camry. So, if something comes off, is cracked, or, God forbid, there is corrosion under the vibration damper, then this vibration damper needs to be completely dismantled, and only then you deal with the metal. You can do the following. If you have deep rust, then bodywork may be required. And under no circumstances should you just cover it with vibration absorbing material. If there are small corrosion spots, then you need to treat these spots, clean them, apply first acidic, and then ordinary prime coat. And only after the coat has completely dried, apply vibration absorbing materials. Vibration absorbing materials should not be applied over rust or corroded metal. After we have checked the standard vibration damper and the metal for rust, we clean the metal surface, remove dust and dirt, and be sure to treat it with a degreasing agent containing petroleum solvent. In order to ensure that the vibration absorbing material will have excellent adhesion. As for other standard noise insulation materials on this car, they include soundproofing linings on the rear wheel arch. Today, it is common for many cars. There is one main rule. These linings are an important part of the standard soundproofing design of this vehicle and should never be removed or thrown away. We carefully remove them, treat them with our sound insulation products, and then put them back in place. This is an important rule for linings. Keep this in mind. Also, there may be other different soundproofing membranes and linings on different parts of the body. They may be located under the back seat and somewhere else. We definitely leave them in place. As for sound absorbing elements, as a rule, there are standard sound absorbing elements on the roof, on plastic elements of the doors and interior, and so on. Standard sound absorbing elements are removed from the doors and replaced with a new STP sound absorber. As for the sound absorber on the roof, if it is attached to the roof itself, then we also remove it completely with glue. If it is attached to the roof trim, then we leave it, that's the rule. After we have disassembled the interior, it is important to come up with the procedure for noise insulation work. Here we will go with this order. First of all, during comprehensive noise insulation, we deal with the roof. The roof trim is the cleanest and most fragile element of a car's interior. Therefore, until we have completely disassembled the interior, removed the carpet, and so on, we carefully lower the roof, carry out the work, and then we put it back and do not touch it again. It is important. After noise insulation of the roof, we proceed to the floor, and then to the trunk. The second to the last noise insulation stage is the doors, and the last one is the trunk lid. As for outside of the cabin, the last thing we treat is the wheel arches, that is, it is done after removing the wheels. So, we start noise insulation process according to our algorithm, that is, 
the first thing we do is noise insulation of the roof. For doing this, you need to disassemble the roof, prepare and apply noise insulation materials, and then assemble the roof back. The first stage, dismantling the roof trim, must be done with clean gloves. It often happens that specialists work with the floor, then remember about the roof, and start removing the roof wearing the same gloves. Don't do it, because fingerprints will definitely remain on the roof, and they will be very difficult to wash off. The roof, let me remind you, is the cleanest element of the car body, the cleanest element of the interior. Here we have bare metal that we need to treat properly. But before that, we need to prepare it. We check the standard vibration damper. You can see these two pieces on the roof. This is usually a bitumen vibration damper, which can be found on the roof of many cars. We check that it is not cracked, with no bubbles and no signs of corrosion underneath. If everything is fine, we install a vibration-absorbing material on it. As a vibration-absorbing material, we will use Aero by STP. This is the lightest and most effective 2 mm vibration absorber on the market. In order to properly install Aero, the following requirements must be met. The mounting surface must be clean and degreased, then the material is cut into strips with a knife and mounted edge to edge. Be sure to leave some space from the edge of the roof and from the reinforcements on the roof. This is necessary so that during the process of rolling the vibration cushioning material edges are rolled out as much as possible. In order to properly roll aero vibration absorbing material onto the roof, you need to use a roller like this. This roller is quite light, and it makes rolling material onto the roof rather convenient. The material is rolled out to a uniform layer. That is, the embossing is rolled out, with special attention being paid to the edges. If bubbles appear on the material during the rolling process, cut them with a knife to squeeze out the air and roll everything out again. So, we've finished noise insulation of the roof. Let's go through everything we've done in order. As a vibration absorbing material, STP Aero is installed as the first layer. It is applied onto the entire roof with small spaces along the edges in order to properly roll it out. The material is rolled out with a special STP roller. It is important to carefully roll out the material to the point when all the embossing is rolled out. If any bubbles appear during installation, carefully cut them with a knife, avoiding damaging the metal. Because if you cut metal during installation, corrosion will subsequently appear there, and nothing good will come of it. Therefore, this must be done carefully. The next layer is Biplast, a premium segment material. It is designed to absorb sound over a very wide range. The material is mounted as a second layer directly onto Aero, and not overlapping Aero, but slightly short of the edges of the mounted vibration damper. 
This is important in order to properly roll out the material, which is also performed with a roller, and in order to avoid mounting onto some complex metal parts, for example, ceiling reinforcements. Because if you mount it tightly onto the ceiling reinforcements, this will violate the technology, and it will be impossible to guarantee the reliability of the installed material. That's why, when installing the material, you need to take into account several important features. Firstly, the material cannot be stretched during installation. It should stay in the condition you took it out of the package in. When cutting, measuring out and gluing, be sure to not stretch it. Once again about rolling out, every corner, every edge and the entire surface of the material should be rolled out with a roller. We roll out both vibration absorbing and sound absorbing materials. Installing these materials onto the roof allows you to reduce the overall sound pressure in the car interior, as well as reduce the level of noise from precipitation and air resistance. The so-called airborne noise will disturb the driver and passengers less, both in the driver's and in the back seat. Here, our unit on noise insulation of the roof comes to an end, and we move on to the next stage of noise insulation.